Silver Defender asks, were there any gigs you had to turn down due to Mythbusters season one going into full production? And was there, is there any guilt associated with the success of Mythbusters? No, no guilt associated with the success of Mythbusters, not at all. Um, but I will tell you that when the, so uh, the timeline is we filmed the pilots in uh, the mid, we filmed the pilots in June and July of 2002. Um, they cut those back in Australia, in Sydney, Australia, into the first three episodes of Mythbusters. Uh, the first one being Rocket Car. Uh, then uh, those aired in January of 2003. Discovery awarded the season within a week of the first airing. Um, and then they showed up in, I think, like February or March. I think it's late February. And what was going on with me at the time was in the summer of 02, I was working on the Matrix sequels in the model department. I was supervising construction on some parts of the dock. Me and Fawn worked on that for a year and a half. Fawn Davis. Uh, I took a leave of absence from the Matrix. Don Bees replaced me uh, while I went and shot the pilots. So Don Bees is absolutely responsible for me getting Mythbusters because he gave me that time and space, man. Uh, and then I came back, finished out my gig on The Matrix, and got hired up at ILM on Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. Um, and I was not only hired to work on Rise of the Machines, but it was my first job in the model shop hired as a supervisor. Um, and to secretly make sure that I didn't screw up, they gave me uh, Fawn Davis, an experienced supervisor, to be my right hand, and uh, Fawn shepherded me through that process, and it was stunning. And they also gave me a desk. I also got a desk. They gave me Chuck Wiley's old desk, which was so thrilling. Do you know what I just, because I got a desk at ILM just before they shut down the model shop. Like they ended up shutting it down two or three years later. And the way I describe it to people is I felt like I pulled my hat as the door was closing, the Raiders hat. That's literally the image in my head of getting a desk at ILM in 03, but that's not what you were asking about. Um, so I finished out Terminator 3 and delivered the particle accelerator. And it was a really fun gig. Peter Rubin was the art director on that. He's a wonderful illustrator and art director, really fun to work with. Um, the set itself was gorgeous, the set that Fawn and I built. Um, sadly, it's not sadly, it, when, the move, when the Cinefix issue came out about Terminator 3, Grant Imahara is photographed working on our particle accelerator. Um, not me or Fawn. <laughs> uh, never got in Cinefix. But again, your question, oh right, what, what, what was I working on that I left? Um, just as season one was getting ready to start, I was working on um, Pan. I was working on Pan and we were making large ship models. I'm talking like 10 to 12 feet long. If you've ever seen any behind the scenes of the Black Pearl blowing up from any of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, those were all built by ILM, and they were all blown up on the slab up there in San Rafael. Uh, and we were building the same kinds of ships at the same kinds of scale. And I was particularly working on Captain Hook's ship, the Grimace. And the Grimace specifically is called the Grimace because the whole back end of the ship is a frown. Um, and so uh, 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 the frown, uh, so I was working on, at this point, uh, I think Don Bees had done all the modeling for the boat sections and the ships were being built by Dave Murphy and some other folks. And then I was doing this detailing on the, the rear section of the ship, trying to turn it into a grimace. And I was trying to use vacuum form and laser cutting to add all this extra sort of cookie cutter detail to make it super elaborate and to build scale. And I was about really a quarter of the way into this, which is sort of the worst time to leave a build when I had to leave to go shoot Mythbusters for the next 14 years. Um, my good friend, Dave Fogler, uh, who ended up uh, working at Island for 22 years, uh, uh, amazing, we just played poker this weekend. Uh, Dave picked up where I left off and had some words for me later of like, the thing is, is that when you're in like the 20% mark of a build, there's all these, you're solving like 
problem 2A of a 47 problem spreadsheet. The 20, like you end up doing so much of the problem solving, some of the bulk of the problem solving at the halfway mark and further. But at the beginning, you're just sort of like trying to put the whole scope of the build in your head. And so that's where I was. And so what Dave Fogler received from me was this sort of mental jumble of parts and pieces that needed a lot of finesse because I hadn't solved some problems. And because he's a different builder than I, we had different ways of approaching. And I just remember a few months later, he was like, mm, savage. <laughs> you really left me with a lot of problems to solve. Um, so yeah, yeah, that happened. Um, I will tell you, uh, I was working on that film when the pilots of Mythbusters aired. So right, it's January of 03. I was working with my, my colleagues and friends at ILM, and then we all went home that night and Mythbusters aired for the first time and it came in the next day and we all talked about it a lot. It was really far out, it was really surreal. Several of my coworkers said, felt exactly like working alongside you. Um, I think Scott McNamara said, I felt like I should fill out a time card. It felt so much like, you know, just working with you on a gig. Uh, my colleagues were very gracious and lovely uh, about the airing of that show. They, they were very happy for uh, the adventure I was about to go on. And, uh, you know, I moved on from ILM to go do Mythbusters with all of their goodwill and, and love. And uh, still some of my favorite humans in the world. Josie Mayday asks, do you, do you ever think that you might ever put on, sorry, she wrote a better question than I am reading. Do you think you might ever put the special effects hat back on for a feature? For a feature, no, no. Um, there's a difference between a deep level of knowledge about special effects, which I absolutely have, and having a effects director's chops. Um, and that's something that you've got to train a long time for. You're managing large groups of people. You are working with a director and a set of people in that chain of command. You are delivering against budgets, against timelines, against personnel issues. Um, it is I, actually, having a deep knowledge of special effects is only just like the first line item on your resume you should have to be an effects director. Um, it is a, it is a, so no for a feature, but it might do it for a short film. Let me, you know, it's not like I'm looking to, it's not like I'm looking for work in that department. There are, I have plenty of friends who do it at the highest levels and they're wonderful. I don't have any desire to go have that job, but for a small film, yeah, that might be really fun. That might be a, a genuinely entertaining thing to do. So never say never, however unlikely it may be. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects questions you get to ask direct questions during my live streams and we have some members only videos including the adam real-time series of unbroken unedited shots of me working here in the shop they are weirdly meditative thank you guys so much i'll see you on the next one